Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the lateral medullary syndrome, also called Wallenberg syndrome, also called Pika syndrome. It is a clinical syndrome that happens due to blockage of the posterior inferior cerebellar artery or the vertebral artery. It is a syndrome, it affects the posterior lateral aspect of the medulla oblongata. There is a part of the brain stem. Okay, so what structures are affected? If you go there, we'll find out that the vestibular nuclei is affected the vestibular nuclei that is associated with that of the eighth cranial nerve the vestibular part of vestibular cochlear nerve inferior cerebellar peduncle this is the the it is composed of restiform body and juxta restiform body the nucleus ambiguous of cranial nerves number nine there is the glossopharyngeal nerve vagus nerve and accessory nerve so that is the nucleus ambiguous this is the nucleus ambiguous that is somatic visceral efferent glossopharyngeal nerve root that is very close to here not shown here vagal nerve root we have the dorsal motor nerve of the vagus nerve, the 10th cranial nerve here. Lateral spinothalamic tract. This is the lateral spinothalamic tract. Spinal trigeminal nucleus that is also undergoing through lesion that is the descending tract of V. That means the 5. There is the, the trigeminal nucleus and tract is here okay then descending sympathetic fiber that passes through the reticular formation throughout that and this part is the site of lesion due to blockage of the posterior inferior cerebellar artery or a part just proximal to the posterior inferior cerebellar artery it is a branch of vertebral artery so if the vertebral artery in proximity to the posterior inferior cerebral artery is blocked then we'll also get the lateral medullary syndrome also called the Wallenberg syndrome this dark area shows the the structure involved in that type of blockage of the the blood vessel in the posterior inferior cerebellar artery so if you go to the previous image we, we may compare that okay so here hypoglossal nerve is not affected because this is a site of lesion on this side in this image so there will be involvement of the vestibular nuclei and there will be involvement of the spinal trigeminal nucleus will be involved involvement of the nucleus ambiguous and also involvement of spinothalamic tract we have the the this is the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus nerve and this is the nucleus of the glossopharyngeal nerve so this might be involved with the lesion involved this structure the, these two may be involved but nucleus ambiguous is involved here okay so we got these are the lesion in case of lateral medullary syndrome or Wallenberg syndrome okay so we have done that part now learn site of lesion what is the clinical manifestation in lateral spinothalamic tract lesion we will have contralateral loss of pain and temperature below the neck throughout the entire body below the neck okay so spinal trigeminal nucleus and tract ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature from face we know that the trigeminal nerve has three division ophthalmic division 
one is the ophthalmic division another one is the maxillary division mandibular division so there will be ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature of the face and there will be descending sympathetic tract involvement that will lead to tract means collection of fibers ipsilateral horner syndrome vestibular nucleus is will be affected there will be nystagma that is the involuntary oscillatory movement of the eyeball nausea vomiting and vertigo inferior cerebellar parangal involvement will lead to ipsilateral cerebellar sign like that of dystaxia dysmetria and dysdiodokinesis nucleus ambiguous is a column of nucleus of the glossopharyngeal nerve the vagus nerve and the cranial accessory nerve okay if these are involved then there will be ipsilateral laryngeal pharyngeal and palatal paralysis glossopharyngeal nerve may be involved then loss of gag reflex the afferent segment of the gag reflex is lost and also the efferent segment along with the vagus nerve okay vagus nerve root hoarseness of voice because vocal cord cannot vibrate there will be dysphagia difficulty in swallowing of food because of, of the esophagus is innervated by the vagus nerve again dysphonia there will be disturbance in the in the vibration of the vocal cord and phonation okay so there will be if there is lesion of the nucleus gracilis and cuneatus then numbness of the ipsilateral arm and leg one is very important point here remember that only spinal thalamic tract this is contralateral other side ipsilateral same side problem only the pain temperature below the neck on the opposite half of the body okay that will be the manifestation okay so we go to the lateral medullary syndrome here okay solitary tract and nucleus is involved solitary tract is associated with the seven cranial nerve nine cranial nerve and ten cranial nerve they carry the taste sensation and general sensation okay uh, these are mostly for the taste sensation and that will lead to disguise here that is the the altered sense of taste so taste sensation that is carried by anterior two third of the tongue by the caudate tympani branch of facial nerve posterior except the valet papillae posterior one third plus valet papillae the taste sensation carried by the glossopharyngeal nerve extreme posterior part of the tongue the taste sensation carried by vagus nerve these are going through the solitary tract this may be involved okay in case of our in case of lateral medullary syndrome there will be disguise here dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus may be involved that lead to dips near there is difficulty in breathing and tachycardia increased heart rate damage to the respiratory center in the reticular formation reticular formation is a network of nerves and nerve fibers at the at the brain stem that include the midbrain pons medulla oblongata but it also extends to the cerebrum and spinal cord so in the reticular formation there will be damage to the respiratory center in the reticular formation or to the vagal motor nucleus that will lead to hiccup also called singletus another devastating condition bilateral medullary damage what will happen on dean on dine cars person cannot breathe spontaneously that breathing depends on when he think then he can breathe otherwise he cannot breathe no respiration without thinking that is the on dine cars if there is bilateral medullary damage okay so we got that now lateral medullary syndrome sensory loss and horner syndrome we'll find out that so here is a site this side has problem this is ipsilateral problem here contralateral loss of temperature and the pain here 
this is a case of Horner syndrome. This is its lateral problem here. Okay, this is due to the damage to the descending fibers of the of the descending sympathetic fiber from the hypothalamus to the lateral intermediate intermediate gray horn of the T1 to L2 segment of the spinal cord. So from the hypothalamus to the lateral gray horn. So those descending fiber is involved. Then in lateral medullary syndrome, we'll have also ipsilateral Horner syndrome, ptosis. Eyelid is drooping down due to paralysis of the superior tertial muscle or the molar muscle. Meiosis, pupil constricted because dilated pupillae is not getting innervation because there is no sympathetic innervation. And hydrosis, so this side there will be no sweating because sweat gland depends on sympathetic nerve fiber as because we have descending sympathetic fiber from the hypothalamus to the to the lateral gray horn of the T1 to L2 is cut. So there will be anhydrosis. Also apparently in ophthalmus, it seems that eyeball has pushed back. Okay, so these are the features of Horner syndrome that may be associated with the lateral medullary syndrome. Okay, so my acknowledgement. And thank you very much for attending my class. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friends and please support my channel. Please subscribe me and have a nice day. Bye now.